Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. When people talk about the economy, one of the most important indicators they mention is inflation. But what exactly is inflation? How do we measure it, and why does it matter so much in our daily lives? In today's video, I'll break down everything you need to know about inflation and price levels in the economy. Section 1, Definition. Inflation represents the increase in prices across the economy over time. Understanding inflation is crucial because it affects everything from your grocery bills to your salary negotiations. Think of it as the economy's thermometer, it tells us how hot or cold the economic environment is getting. Section 2. How to measure price levels. There are three main ways economists measure price levels in the economy, number one. The GDP deflator. This is the broadest measure of prices, capturing every final good and service in the economy. Think of it as taking the temperature of the entire economic body, not just specific parts. Number two. The consumer price index, CPI. This is the most commonly discussed measure, as it tracks the cost of living for typical households. The Bureau of Labor Statistics creates what they call a market basket. Imagine it as a giant shopping cart containing everything a typical urban family of four might buy. Number three. The producer price index, PPI. This measures prices from the seller's perspective, tracking what producers receive for their goods and services. Interestingly, changes in PPI often signal where consumer prices might head in the future. Section 3, The CPI Market Basket. Let's look at how the CPI market basket is actually constructed. Here's what makes it fascinating. Number 1. Creating the market basket. The Bureau of Labor Statistics surveys 14,000 households nationwide about their spending habits. They track exactly what families buy and how much they spend. They compile this into 211 categories of goods and services. The basket represents what a typical urban family of four purchases. Here's something surprising about 75% of the typical market basket consists of just three categories, housing, transportation, and food. Number 2. Price Collection Process Hundreds of BLS employees become price detectives. They visit 23,000 stores across 87 different cities and record prices every single month. They even track the same items in the same stores to ensure consistency. Each price then gets weighted based on how important it is in the typical family's budget. Section 4. Calculating CPI and Inflation. Let me walk you through exactly how the CPI and inflation are calculated. It's like creating a giant shopping receipt for the entire economy. For purposes of this example, we assume that the market basket has only three products, eye examinations, pizzas, and books. Number 1. Calculate the expenditures. Suppose that during the base year, 1999, a survey determines that each month, a typical family purchases one eye examination, 20 pizzas, and 20 books. At 1999 prices, a family must spend $750 to purchase this market basket of goods and services. Number 2. Calculate the CPI. The CPI for every year after the base year is determined by dividing the expenditure necessary to purchase the market basket in that year by the expenditure required in the base year and then multiplying by 100. Please notice that the quantities of the products purchased in 2020 and 2021 are irrelevant in calculating the CPI because we are assuming that households buy the same market basket of products each month. Using the numbers in the table, we can calculate the CPI for 2020 and 2021 as 120 and 122, respectively. Number 3. Calculate the inflation. Notice that CPI are index numbers, which means they are not measured in dollars or any other units. The CPI is intended to measure changes in the price level over time. We can't use the CPI to tell us in an absolute sense how high the price level is, it tells us only how much the price level has changed over time. We measure the inflation rate as the percentage increase in the CPI from one year to the next. For our simple example, the inflation rate in 2021 would be the percentage change in the CPI from 2020 to 2021, which is 1.7%. Because the CPI is designed to measure the cost of living, we can also say that the cost of living increased by 1.7% during 2021. Section 5. Understanding Purchasing Power you are likely to receive a much higher salary after graduation than your parents did 20 or more years ago, but prices 20 years ago were, on average, much lower than prices today. In other words, the purchasing power of a dollar was much higher 20 years ago because the prices of most goods and services were much lower. Price indexes such as the CPI give us a way of adjusting for the effects of inflation so that we can compare dollar values from different years. Let me walk you through a simple example. 
In addition to data on employment, the BLS Establishment Survey gathers data on average hourly earnings of all employees working at private firms. The table shows nominal average hourly earnings of $19.73 in 2020 and $20.14 in 2021, with a CPI of 230 and 233, respectively. In order to measure changes in the purchasing power of these earnings, we have to convert the nominal values reported by the BLS to real values in this example. Number 1. Calculate the real average hourly earnings. Nominal average hourly earnings are the number of dollars a worker receives. Real average hourly earnings measure the purchasing power of nominal earnings. To calculate real average hourly earnings, we have to divide the nominal average earnings by the CPI for that year and multiply by 100. According to the formula, real average hourly earnings for 2020 and 2021 equal $8.58 and $8.64, respectively. Number 2. Calculate the percentage change in nominal average hourly earnings and in real average hourly earnings between 2020 and 2021. The percentage change in nominal average hourly earnings equals 2.1%. The percentage change in real average hourly earnings equals 0.7%. We can conclude that because of inflation, real average hourly earnings increased by 1.4 percentage points less than did nominal average hourly earnings. Section 6. Why this matters. Understanding inflation is crucial for several reasons. Number 1. Personal finance. Inflation directly affects your purchasing power by increasing the cost of goods and services over time. By understanding inflation, you can evaluate whether your salary or income growth is keeping pace with the rising cost of living. For example, if your salary increases by 3% annually but inflation is 4%, your real income is effectively decreasing, meaning you can afford less than you could before. It helps you understand whether your salary increases are keeping up with the cost of living. Number 2. Investment Decisions Inflation erodes the value of money over time, which can significantly impact savings and investments. Knowing about inflation helps you choose investment options that provide returns higher than the inflation rate, ensuring your wealth grows in real terms. For instance, investing in stocks or inflation-protected bonds might yield better results than keeping money in a low-interest savings account that fails to outpace inflation. Number 3. Economic Planning Businesses and governments rely on inflation data to make informed decisions about spending, pricing, and policymaking. For example, a government might adjust interest rates or issue inflation-linked bonds to manage economic stability. Similarly, a business might increase prices or adjust wages to maintain profitability and competitiveness. For instance, a bakery might increase the price of bread by 5% in response to rising flour costs due to inflation. Section 7. Summary to wrap up, inflation is much more than just rising prices, it's a key indicator of economic health that affects every aspect of our financial lives. Understanding how it's measured and what it means can help you make better financial decisions and understand economic news more clearly. Alright, that's all for today's topic on inflation. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Have any questions about inflation? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.